Welcome back to our Best of the Rest series where we talk about all the cards from Ether of Vault not spoiled individually. In this video, we're going to cover all the blue cards as we move through Wooburg order. If you want to see part 1, you can click the first link in the description and it'll bring you to our Ether of Vault playlist. Alright, let's take a look at what the rest of the blue commons and uncommons have to offer. Bastion Inventor is 6 mana for a 4-4 Vidalcan Artificer with Improvise and Hexproof. My goodness, this thing is beefy as all heck. 6 mana for a 4-4 isn't terribly great. Hexproof does make it more appealing, dodging most removal in the format. At least you know your 6 mana investment won't go down easy. And having Improvise does make it a bit nicer to cast, hopefully. Now just to be clear, Improvise isn't Affinity, so it's not like we're talking Murn Force or Level Awesome here. If you have a boatload of artifacts, you can get this to 1 blue. And the more artifacts you have, the more justification you have for playing this. I'd probably only include this in decks that are full of artifacts. Hexproof is nice, but it needs something a little more bored and packful for me to recommend it universally. Dispersal Technician is 5 mana for a 3-2 Vidalcan Artificer. When it enters the battlefield, you may return target artifact to its owner's hand. This is an interesting card. It's a great way to enable revolt for yourself, you could return an artifact that's cheap, or return an ornithopter for maximum revolt value. Of course, in a set with a plethora of artifacts, this can function similarly to any creature bounce effect. I wouldn't rush to put it in my limited deck, but if you find yourself up against a red-white vehicles player or blue-black artifact improvised deck, the technician could come in handy, helping you to gain on tempo while putting a decent body on the field. It's alright. Hinterland Drake is 3 mana for a 2-3 Drake with flying. It can't block artifact creatures. So we're basically looking at an anti-artifact version of Scrap Skin Drake, which was perfectly fine and limited in its heyday. A 2-3 for 3 isn't anything to write home about, but flying does put it into playable territory. And that 3 toughness? That is nice in the air. It's going to be able to deal with Thopters pretty easily, even if it's ganged up on. It's a solid limited card, should find its way into many blue limited strategies. Ice Over is 2 mana for an enchant artifact or creature. Enchanted permanent doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. This is some cheap removal right here. Granted, it doesn't actually remove the creature or artifact. You can stop them from crewing, you can stop crewing from mattering at all. You can even use it on the creature that crewed a vehicle. Creatures are going to be tapping all the time in this format, like constantly. Taking one of them out of the ballgame is powerful, and for 2 mana, and a common? This is going to be very good, do not underestimate this, removal is removal. Illusionist Stratagem is 4 mana for an instant. Exile up to 2 target creatures you control, then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. Draw a card. The only blue thing about this card is drawing a card. That first ability? That's so white, that's all the white. I do like it though. You get to trigger revolt easily, you blink 2 creatures potentially saving them. And it's at instant speed, so a potential combat trick if needed, and it replaces itself. Not the most powerful uncommon in the set, or even the color for that matter, but still it's worth looking at, especially if you're running a deck with some powerful revolt triggers, or under the battlefield triggers. Leave in the Dust is 4 mana for an instant. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, draw a card. I normally love unsummon effects, like they're my favorite, I love them to death, but this one has me wary. 4 mana to return something to your hand is not good. Being able to draw a card, that is good. But still, it's an expensive, expensive card. You're going to need some solid revolt triggers, or a giant bomb you just have to keep alive to justify consistently running this in a blue deck. Again, I normally really like these effects, I just, I don't know, I'm a bit hesitant here. Hey, Negate is back! Last printed in Oath of the Gate Watch, at least we know Negate is going to be in standard for an additional year at least. Besides the obvious sideboard play in standard, Negate is also going to be a sideboard card in limited. I know vehicles are non-creatures, so that makes it a bit wider, but it's still risky to run main deck game 1, and it could easily be a dead card in your hand. You don't want that, especially in this limited format that looks very board dependent. You need to be playing things. Negate is great for the sideboard, and that's where it should stay. Never pick this in the first 8 to 10 picks in a pack unless there's literally nothing else for you. Salvage Scuttler is 5 mana for a 4-4 Crab. Whenever it attacks, return an artifact you control to its owner's hand. This card's a bit savage. 5 mana for a 4-4 isn't even all that amazing. And the return ability is only good if you have Revolt Triggers. Besides that, we're talking very specific synergies that make this even remotely playable. 
Do not get sucked in because this is an uncommon and you think uncommons are all great in the set. This is not one of those uncommons. If you can get enough revolt, maybe it's alright, but this is not the kind of card you put in every blue deck. No way. Shielded Ether Thief is 2 mana for a 0-4 of a Dalkin Rogue with Flash. Whenever it blocks, you get 1 energy. You can also tap it and pay 3 energy to draw a card. As far as I'm concerned, this is a fixed Wall of Omens in blue. I love the trigger on block. I love that you can flash it in. I love the cost for drawing a card. This is a strong common, and I think it's going to be underestimated, especially when a lot of faster ground-based decks are going to exist in this limited format. I love me some Ether Thief. Sign me up. Take into custody is one blue mana for an instant. Tap target creature, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Okay, this is a card that I can definitively say that I'm just not gonna play. I won't, I'm sorry. But even if it saves me once in a while from a giant gear hulk for two turns, not enough. Too situational, doesn't have enough impact on the board over the long term, I'll pass. Winkin Raiders is 4 of anything and 2 blue for a 4-3 human artificer with improvise and flying. Holy crap, yes! This creature is powerful. This is the big flyer in blue I was looking for. Knocked it out of the park with this design. 6 mana is a little steep for a 4-3 flyer, but you cannot underestimate that power and toughness in the air. Improvise is really where it shines though. Even if you tap only one or two artifacts to get the sound of the battlefield a turn or two early, that makes it amazing. Because this card at 4 mana, or even 5 mana, totally playable, absolutely playable, it's quite good. This is a quality in common. Not the best in the set, but a quality in common. And if you have an artifact theme going when you open this, it is worthy of prioritization. And that's going to do it for the rest of the blue cards in Aether Revolt. From the few we've seen here and the rest of the color in general, I think blue is looking pretty nice overall. It's definitely not powerful enough on its own, but it's going to make a great support color at the very least. Be sure to remember that there's plenty of Revolt support here as well if you find yourself in that strategy early. So with all of that said, what do you think about blue and Aether Revolt? How do you think it shapes up compared to white? Better? Worse? About the same? I'd love to hear what you have to say as we all prepare for the pre-release this coming week. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for the next Best of the Rest installment, and the rest of the week for all of the Aether Revolt pre-release info you could ever need. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. While I normally tell you about booster box prices, I actually want to bring something up. While pre-order prices can be chaotic, if you really want to grab something before release, now's your chance. Baral, Chief of Compliance, is sitting at a cool $6 right now. That may seem high, may seem low. Depending on if it sees play in standard, it could go up or down. If you're intent on getting copies of the card, you can get them right here as cheap as they can be. If you're not interested in him, how about Yeheni? The new Aetherborn Legend is pre-ordering at a bargain bin $1.25, not even joking, now that's a deal. If you want these cards, click the links, helps the channel, we all win, enjoy.